Ladies and gentlemen, the next speaker of the conclave is Shri Devijyoti Re Chaudhary, MD and CEO, National E-Governance Services Limited, the Information Utility registered by the IBBI. Prior to joining NESL, Sir was serving as the Chief General Manager in the State Bank of India on deputation to IBBI, where he took some path-breaking initiatives like the implementation of the company's registered valuer and valuation rules 2017, and he has been a very active author and speaker. Sir, may I request you to kindly address the audience? Thank you, Archana. Respected Chairperson IBBI Shri Ravi Mittalji, distinguished dignitaries on the dais, ladies and gentlemen. Chairperson IBBI raised four issues. Firstly, the quality of IM. Secondly, about claim verification process. Thirdly, reduction of time in the process and better quality resolution plans. During my address today, I would like to cover all these four issues. So first of all, I'm indeed grateful to IBBI for giving me this opportunity to speak at this very August forum. As Mr. Satish Gupta mentioned, IBBI, this IBC has four pillars, three pillars most of us know. The fourth pillar is little less known, but equally important, and that is the information utility. As on date, National E-Governance Services Limited is the only registered information utility or IU with IBBI. When the code was implemented, the IU was not ready. But today, the IU has comprehensive information about the debt of corporates, use of the IU, as the fourth pillar can help at every stage of the CRP. The three pillars of the IBC draw inspiration from insolvency legislation in advanced jurisdiction. The IU, as per the IBBI brochure, has no parallel anywhere in the world. When I was doing a session on digital document execution, I was asked, do you have a comparable product anywhere in the developed world? I said, today, do we still need to look at the developed world for inspiration? Do we not have UPA? Did we not do our own COVID-19 vaccine when, when the country needed it most? This is a brave new India which is not afraid to innovate and to set examples for the world to admire. The IU is an Indian innovation. Let us be proud of it. When the IU was set up, there was no precedent. It was all uncharted territory. Today, IU is in a position to make a difference to the trade ecosystem in general and the insolvency framework in particular. I will elucidate how. At the pre-admission stage, use of the ROD of the IU expedites admission of corporate insolvency resolution process. The record of default of the IU 
captures all important information required by the A to decide if the application can be admitted for CIRP. What is the information they are looking for? They are looking for amount of default, date of default. Now we are also proposing acknowledgement of debt. They are also looking for pre-existing disputes, details of communication with the debtor and also status of authentication. In the matter of Vipul and others versus Teco Industries and others, 18th May 2022, Honorable and Clat held that in case the record of IU shows that there is debt which is in default, the AA or appellate authority are not required to further examine the record maintained by the IU. More so, when the record of the IU is deemed to be authenticated and no dispute or refusion of the said record has been done by the corporate debtor earlier. The IU can also assist the IP during the CIRP. Let's see how. The code provides that all FCs shall submit information to the IU. RBI wide its advisories in 2017 and 19 has stated that regulated entities of IBBI have to submit information to the IU. As a result, for the corporate segment, almost the entire data of banks, NBFCs, debenture trustees, and even some operational creators, private financial creators, that information is with the IU. Verification of claims, Honorable Chairperson spoke about earlier, Mr. Satish Gupta also spoke about earlier, IU, the IP can access the IU, compare it with the claims filed by creditors. In EFPO versus Subodh Kumar Agarwal, NCLAT was the opinion that when the IRP and RP came, comes into knowledge of orders against the corporate debtor or notice against the corporate debtor of ongoing proceedings, he should be under obligation to include it in the IM and bring the same to the notice of the COC to enable the COC take a wholesome view of entire sequence of facts and circumstances. In this case, the claims were not accepted because the law still provides for submission of claims to the IU. However, if the IP becomes aware of claims either from the records of the CD or from that of the IU, he can take up with creditors, bring it to the knowledge of the COC, and yes, there can be avoidable litigation, which leads to delays in CIRP. Section 7.2c of IBC provides authority to the IRP to access the electronic records of CD. Regulations 788 a 9 a of CIRP regulations state that existence of debt due to financial creditors, operational creditors, workmen, employees may be proved on the basis of records available with the IU. The IU regulations provide that creditors update their claims on a monthly basis and information of default has to be submitted within seven days of occurrence of default. I can foresee that in future the law might also provide for submission of claims to the IU. 
So if a CRP is initiated on 15th May, the FC has to simply update the information for 15 days from 30th April to 15th May and submit to the IU. OCs can also submit their claims to the IU after following simple process of registration, which only involves identification of the person submitting the information. NESL has a digital document execution facility, which can also provide evidence for the creation of debt. Now, what is so unique about the IU? It is not a creditor's version of truth. Information submitted by a creditor is delivered. And I repeat the word delivered, it's not sent, it's delivered to the concerned debtor who has the option to dispute or accept the same. He can, of course, choose to ignore the same. But in either case, the details of the IU's communication with the debtor becomes part of the credit history of the debtor and it is stored with the IU and can be retrieved. In the case of Vipul and others versus Teco Industries and others, Enclited noted that corporate debtor chose neither to reply to the said email nor forward it to the appropriate addressee. It concluded, on the basis of these facts and analysis, we are inclined to hold that the corporate debtor cannot deny the existence of a financial debt as defined in section 58 of the IBC as present in the record of the information utility. I also draw your attention to section 99.3 of the IBC which states that the debt is registered with the IU. The debtor shall not be entitled to dispute the validity of such debt. This section is relating to individual insolvency, which has not been notified except for PG to CD. But the intent of the law seems to be very clear. If a debtor has been given an opportunity to accept or dispute a debt and he has not done so, he cannot be allowed to dispute it later. How this is useful to the IP? As per our records, the number of disputes recorded with the IU are increasing. We see this as a positive development because CDs are increasingly coming on the platform and giving the confirmation or recording the dispute. If the IP sees such records, it alerts him and he can exercise due diligence regarding such claim. He can ask for additional evidence. He can even refute such claims. Similarly, IP can also get information about securities provided by the debtor against the various credit facilities and the valuation for the same. He can compare it with the valuation report and give an alert to him regarding discrepancies. All the above services are provided free of cost to all registered IPs and they help in timely conclusion of the process. NESL has also been impaneled as a PDA service provider by IBBI. Now, why should I use such services? when there are so many service providers in the market? The reason is that IU has data valued at 155 lakh crores and to protect this data, NESL has invested heavily in information security infrastructure. When you use the PDA services, you get the same benefits. We are ISO 27001 2013 certified Data is in a tier 4 data center, 
something which in India mostly banks have. Our VDR services are very cost effective with ease of navigation. And also, if you're talking of better resolution plans, getting better response to EOI, more resolution applicants, this platform provides a comfort for resolution applicants, especially from overseas. NESL also offers PDA++ services, which is an end-to-end -end digitization of CIP services. Now, the IP cannot be, need not be, despound. He can operate from anywhere. He can give authority to requisite persons to access the data. Chaudhary, we are just exceeding some time. If you can conclude. Yeah, I'll just conclude. So, uh, about uh, storage of data also, IU has, uh, uh, has uh, provision for storage of data and uh, these services are also there. And as on date 600 IPs have already registered on the platform and more than 100 are using the platform for the assignments. So with so much information available to the IP from the IU, I can only say that the IU is a personal assistant to the IP. So I would again request you that please do use the services of the IU, which is the fourth pillar of the IBC. I'm extremely grateful to IBBI for giving me an opportunity to speak at this IP conflict and all of you for giving me such a patient hearing.